Welcome to Insights, the program that puts you at the head of the class in the Arlington Public Schools. I'm Sandra Faup, and I'll be with you for today's edition of Insights. Today, we'll meet a new member of the Arlington Schools, not a student, but the principal of Yorktown High School. We'll also be taking a look at a program that's the first of its kind in the state, one in which an elementary school student in the morning becomes a vocational professional by afternoon. On our profile segment, we'll see the past through the eyes of a local Arlington artist as he captures pieces of history with brush and canvas. Our next guest could be found not too long ago donning a paint smock with finger paint up to his elbows at Madison Elementary School. Since those days, Paul McGee's paintbrush has led him through Europe and many of the ports and harbors of the Chesapeake Bay, areas rich in maritime and waterfront history. Paul McGee combines precise historic detail, light interplay, and picturesque settings into his own unique style of painting. Today on Profile, we'll see how those early days of finger painting really paid off. Behind me is my original oil painting of my portrait of the Statue of Liberty along with an original poem that I wrote uh, talking about the significance of the immigration and the years when the Statue of Liberty was the first thing that immigrants would see coming into the New World in New York Harbor. Painted it in 1985 surrounding the 100th birthday of the statue. I in turn donated uh, some of the prints of the Liberty painting to the Arlington County Public Schools in a way of thanking the school system for all they did for me in the years that I went uh, to James Madison Elementary, Williamsburg Junior High School, and Yorktown Senior High School, graduating in 1978. I was trying to give something back for all that was given to me. And through the years, I've become uh, best known for my ability to paint a variety of subject matter. I imagine I'm the best known for my historical scenes, my recreations of areas in the not too distant past. I have also painted several wildlife theme paintings. I a couple of which are right here in Arlington, having been painted at Gulf Branch Creek. Uh, one is behind me. This is Red Fox Creek. This, that's the name of the painting, painted at Gulf Branch. Uh, we're looking at a scene of uh, some of the wildlife indigenous to this area, red foxes. Um, I recall when I was on location painting this, the temperature was approximately 24 degrees, so it was quite uh, a labor of love. Um, and there are foxes down there, as are white-tailed deer, which I show in my painting of the same creek, First Snow. And this was also uh, seen on Gulf Branch. Uh, very familiar to me in that I grew up just a short walk from this location and grew up playing in these woods. So it was something I had always wanted to paint and I could show some of Arlington too. Aside from my wildlife paintings, I'm also known for doing scenes that involve a lot of historical research. I do uh, historical recreations of uh, various regions around the country, many of which have been in this immediate vicinity. Uh, one is right next to me. This is a scene of the waterfront of Georgetown as it appeared in 1887. Now, a lot of people that drive back and forth along the parkway going to work in D.C. every morning don't realize that it was once a working port, what they're looking at. Uh, up on the hill, we see Georgetown University, and below we see the docks where the large three- and four-masted schooners would come down from New England and unload ice into the ice houses in the Washington Channel and then take on coal at Georgetown. Uh, coming in from the CNO Canal. And you'll notice that these tall docks here, um, they would be 
at the same height as the water level of the CNO Canal directly behind the first row of buildings. Now the barge with coal from West Virginia would pull up and they would transfer the coal directly into these little hopper cars that would run on train tracks on the top of the dock here. Then they would roll the cars out to the end of the dock, dump the coal down a chute, and then load the coal into the holds of the schooner. And at that point, the schooner would go back out to sea and, and wherever the customer was for the coal, either head back up to New England or down south to Florida. For many, many years, that was the main activity that powered the port of Georgetown. Ice coming in and coal going out. And just up the river from Georgetown is Great Falls. Now, I'm standing next to my original oil painting of the falls that I painted on location uh, down on the rocks on the Virginia side, looking over towards the Maryland side. Uh, what I'm trying to capture here in this scene is the um, early morning sun coming up, burning the mist off of the rapids in the distance, and bald eagles are flying overhead, uh, eagles which are now on the comeback in that area. Um, it's a very beautiful place to go and it has always inspired me and finally I had the opportunity to paint a scene of it. And this is one of my latest paintings. This is a 1915 view of Ocean City, Maryland. We're on the beach amongst the people in their old bathing suits. And this is just a scene showing the activity on a summer's day many, many years ago at the beginning of Ocean City's existence. This painting involves three different styles of thinking uh, as far as how I approached this scene. The building section and the boardwalk, I have to think structurally as to how I paint that. The water, the ocean, I have to think motion. It's more like an action type painting. And in the over 200 figures on the beach, I had to treat each one as a portrait. So that's a third type of painting. I have a good quantity of my original oil paintings and all of my limited edition prints located at my gallery in Arlington. That's what you would see if you come to visit the Paul McGee Gallery. But what you may not see is all the steps that go into the production of one of these major oil paintings. For example, my scene of New York Harbor in 1954 with the superliner the United States departing for Europe. As with all of my paintings, the first step is the research going to the actual location, finding uh, what photographic material might exist, and talking to eyewitnesses alive at a certain period of time. Uh, on the New York Harbor scene, um, the first step I can show is the pencil drawing, which is about 20 inches across and shows a lot of the detail that I have to work out in the pencil stage. The second step is an oil sketch uh, where I'm not so much concentrating on the detail but the coloration, lighting situation, the uh, what, what the weather is doing, uh, many things I have to think of in coming up with a scene depicting an actual location at an actual time. After I've worked out all the potential problems in both my pencil drawing and oil sketch, I can then proceed to the large oil painting, four feet across, uh, which 
may take uh, upwards of five, sometimes six months to complete. It's from this finished large oil painting that my prints are finally made. I set about to create each of my major oil paintings. I always try to put myself into the scene, at least figuratively, uh, to give the illusion that you're on location there. However, there's one instance in which I literally did put myself into the scene. There's a 1930 view of Baltimore Harbor behind me uh, in which there's this little artist painting the scene down in the corner. Uh, that became a self-portrait of myself. I figured it would be the only chance I would ever get to paint something like that. If you'd like to see more of Paul McGee's paintings, check out his art gallery on Glebe Road, across from Boston Common. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. See you next time on Insights.